Zeno. You hear him load his weapon. She has got a farm right next door to us. What's the name of the farm? Itapi, and she owns another farm over here called Born. She owns another farm over there called Raiden. Deputy Prime Minister Mutambara on April the 17th conducted an inspection of some of the affected farms. We are here on a fact-finding mission. We're not here to make any decisions. We're not here to make any judgments. We're a government based on the rule of law and want to understand what is going on on the farms. They put their cattle in our seed maize that we're growing for agri-seeds. So it's just looting. Uh, they're stopping our workers from working for two months now, since the 6th of February. Um, it's, and they're trying to get rid of our manager now, Joseph Zulu. Uh, they intimidated him on Sunday until quarter to three in the morning. They broke all his windows in his house. His family was inside with his wife and his children. I just told him that uh, well, I've got nothing to do with the farm. I'm not the owner of the farm. I'm just a worker at the farm. Uh, he's Senator Jamaya Muduri. He has got four farms already. He's got four farms which are abandoned. He's not producing anything on them. And he now he's moving on to the first one, which would be mine. The police have been complicit with the thugs and have been helping these invaders and will not assist us in any way. Looks like stuff has gone missing. Can you look at the drawers that have been opened? The, um, I'm not actually sure if stuff has gone missing, but it does look like they have been in here. That box is now empty, which was packed. Okay. Um, stuff has been broken. Uh, these mangoes here, uh, they, they can't obviously be used for anything. Um, they're, they're right off. Well, we reaped them uh, nearly about two weeks ago, and we haven't been able to get into this picture since that time. There are issues on our farms. There are issues around Biba farms. There are issues around fake and unauthenticated offer letters. There are issues of violence where people are brutalizing each other on the farms. We as a government will brook no nonsense over the farms. There will be no toleration of, of problems like this. Later that afternoon, the invaders, led by a senior member of ZANU PF's employee named Landmine, harvested and stored the rest of the valuable export mango crop. It was illegally sold on the local market. None went to fulfill the export orders. But what I know is that this country has been looted by us all. Let's stop looting our own country. The fleets remain under siege on the farm, unable to stop the unlawful occupation nor the looting. Like the farmers, the workforce on these farms face an uncertain future. Independence Day was celebrated on April the 18th with the Prime Minister on the podium alongside the same service chiefs who have vowed never to salute him. Honourable Prime Minister Morgan Changrai, Honourable Deputy Prime Minister Adam Chandara, the last three detainees were finally granted bail. The two MDC officials in their hospital beds and the journalist Manyere from Chikurubi and Leg Irons. Three days later, the armed guards appeared back in the hospital, and Manyere was being hunted by the police. By this time, after four months in jail, he was also hospitalized. The three were being treated different from the other detainees, as the state alleged that the searches of their properties had discovered ammunition. My only ammunition is what is in the camera. That is the only ammunition I have. As I say, I know only to use a camera, not a gun. On May the 5th, Justina and the others were indicted to appear again before the court. The pegged court was astonished when Magistrate Catherine Chimanda ordered all 15 activists and human rights defenders to be re-detained in custody. She has in effect stopped the defense leading evidence 
showing that uh, the parties are entitled to be out on bail in terms of uh, the consent agreement that was uh, reached. The accused persons, all of them, have effectively been sent back to prison after they had been granted bail through a compromise agreement between the political parties that all political detainees should be released on bail. But there can be no question that the whole process is being handled maliciously. Once again, it appeared that the MDC was being provoked into walking away from the agreement. These rearrests coincided with the Media Association's Press Freedom Day March. For the first time in years, not only was it permitted, it was given a police escort. Journalists' feelings were running high, with Manyere still in custody and Justina re-arrested. The Minister of Media, Information and Publicity is in the process of arranging a media stakeholders conference as part of the first exercise in this important consultative process. We are not going to be the all stakeholders conference. Despite a meeting lasting late into the night with the Deputy Minister, this decision was upheld by the media associations, not only as a mark of solidarity for those in prison, but because it was felt that government had invited as key speakers to the conference the very authors of the repressive media legislation and promoters of bad practice. <laughs> Next day, Justina and the 12 activists, but not Manyere, Mudzingwa and Klamini, we are again granted bail. 13 accused persons, including Justina Mkoko, have been released on bail. We have actually been processing the warrants of liberation, which we are taking to Shkrubi Maximum Prison. <laughs> it's good that they've been indicted uh, now, because uh, we now know some of the names of people who are abducted and abused our clients. I think just sanity has prevailed, and all this harassment should come to a stop. All three hospitalized detainees were released a week later on May the 14th, but not before their lawyer, Alec Muchadehama, had himself been arrested, apparently for securing their previous bail, and spent a night in the cells. I think what they are trying to do is to break my spirit. When lawyers, clerks, magistrates, prosecutors are being arrested on a day-to-day -day basis for doing their work, that has a chilling effect on other human rights defenders. It has not worked in the past, it's not going to work now. There was yet more court activity when Zimbabwe Independent Newspaper's editor, Vincent Kahia, and reporter Constantine Chimakuri were arrested and subsequently also released on bail for publishing the names of state agents responsible for the abductions. This was information contained in the indictments of May the 5th and therefore a matter of public record. There's such a fear of any alternative information going out into the public domain and a fear that people who have perpetrated human rights violations uh, will be, you know, will, will, will appear in the public and people will know their identities. And, you know, we've, we've got such a, an entrenched impunity in the country. Um, you know, you've got this the continuous defiance of court orders over the years, what's been built up is, is um, this idea that, that anyone with an alternative view can just be arrested. On a public platform that same week, politicians were making statements at total variance with the reality on the ground. We want to see a democratic, independent, peaceful, sovereign, prosperous and gender-sensitive Zimbabwe that is rights-driven under the GPA agreement. We committed ourselves to an environment where there will be not only alternative voices but a wide range of media players. I'm particularly concerned about the continued violations of the rule of law in certain sectors, obstructing progressive legislative agenda, and the risk keeping Zimbabwe mad in poverty and the fear of persecution. I've said in a number of platforms that uh, this inclusive government, unless you have a magic wand of an alternative, is irreversible. And therefore, whether you like it or not, we just have to fit yourself within that. Group. 
With the use of the US dollar and rand for trading, there were no longer the desperate shortages of basic commodities in the shops. But there were many who were far from happy. Onions, imported. Potatoes, imported. Nachos, imported. Orange. Apples, imported. Oranges, imported. What are the farmers doing here? Doing nothing for <laughs> <laughs> Life, for the vast majority of Zimbabweans, showed little sign of improvement, for the simple reason that the vast majority of the population has little or no access to foreign currency. The inclusive government is not delivering anything for people, it's only delivering positions for politicians. The people are suffering on the ground, there is no money that is circulating for ordinary people to buy the things that are there in the shelves. So it's no use saying they've brought things on the shelf when people cannot buy. And the priority is, is education, and there's nothing happening about education. It's a pathetic. The, the new grooms in, in the GNU were supposed to be standing up to speak with exuberance. We have now a retired Lieutenant Colonel Muriri as Director of Administration in the Ministry of Education. Why are they bringing soldiers in the ministry? We now have retired Lieutenant Colonels as headmasters in our schools. We also are discovering that there is a systematic redeployment of those people who were youth instructors in the border Gezi camps. They are being brought into our schools as teachers and they are teaching all level form 3 and form 4 history. The minister of education is the best this ministry could have but he has been systematically betrayed. The PTUZ and the teachers are making a statement that uh, teachers are suffering, their concerns must be addressed and uh, it would be folly for this government or the people in it to think that the statements we are making are in vain. Tendai Beat must come to the workers and consult them. Even if we are not going to agree, at least if we are going to be part and parcel of the decision-making process, we will be happy. In the health sector, there were some signs of improvement. Basic primary health care, such as the immunization program, was being resuscitated, at least in some areas. But conditions in the hospitals were still being reported as at best inadequate and at worst a death sentence. What is being preached on TVs and radios and in the media, even the print media, is totally different from what is on the ground. Uh, the, the, the situation in the hospital is just the same as uh, before the inclusive government. If you don't have money to pay for the test or the, it's the private laboratories, then that is the end of the road for your for, for, for patients. When I came back, uh, the bed was empty. I thought maybe she, has been, she was taken to the theatre. Uh, they told me that my wife had passed away in the morning around 6.40. Deputy Prime Minister Mutambara did what the Prime Minister had done three months previously to see if there was any improvement in the hospitals. On the same day, Amnesty International presented a damning report on the state of human rights in Zimbabwe. The human rights situation in Zimbabwe remains precarious and the socio-economic conditions desperate. Human rights defenders, journalists and lawyers continue to be intimidated, harassed, threatened, detained and charged, often for malicious prosecutions. So we are the ones who determine whether there's progress or no progress. Amnesty International is no local standing, there's no moral authority to speak on my country. I'm the authority. I tell them what to do, not the other way around. The desperate economic conditions have led to severe denial of economic and social rights of millions of Zimbabweans who are suffering from food shortages, serious health threats, <coughs> and a crisis in the education system. Persistent and serious human rights violations the failure to introduce reform of the police, army and security or address impunity and lack of clear commitment among some parts of the government <coughs> are real obstacles that need to be confronted by the top leadership of Zimbabwe. No amount of hallucination 
on the part of Amnesty International or anybody else will deter us in our pursuit of a peaceful, prosperous and democratic Zimbabwe. Yes, we can. We shall overcome and create a competitive and democratic Zimbabwe. Many responded that no amount of political rhetoric would hide the fact that the inclusive government was failing on many levels. On June the 29th, President Mugabe unilaterally changed the cabinet schedule, allegedly to avoid leaving Prime Minister Changirai in the chair. MDC cabinet members reacted immediately. That ZANU-PF has not woken up to the reality of the MDC as an equal partner. The central issues of the Reserve Bank Governor, the Attorney General, the Provincial Governors, the swearing-in of Roy Bennett, and the appointment of ambassadors remain unresolved. It is time that the irreversibility of our change became a lived reality, not just to zanu PF, but to the people of Zimbabwe at large. I understand how they are frustrated with the delay in the implementation of these issues. But at this moment, I can assure you that uh, there is no thinking in MTC to pull out of the, of the government. I met President Mugabe yesterday, and we discussed this matter. And I emphasized that wherever I went, the issue of fulfillment of the global political agreement was the underlying complaint from our side. The constitutional reform process is potentially a vehicle to create a new culture for diversity and is to be welcomed. The creation of the inclusive government, however, means that Zimbabwe has no political opposition. The voice of civil society, therefore, becomes all the more important in the absence of political opposition. The constitutional reform process as set out in Article 6 of the Global Political Agreement was certainly causing a potentially damaging rift in civil society. A constitution-making process can only be said to be people-driven if the government of the day and the citizen citizenry in its diverse framework reach some understanding about appointing a commission which is then detached from both the civics and the government. And that commission can stand on its own and then run the process of making a constitution. It is not the institution which matters. It is what that institution delivers. But they are supposed to call a conference called the Stakeholders Conference. They themselves will decide who is a stakeholder. We have selected uh, we have identified stakeholders. That process can never be called independent. You set up the three political parties, then they decide who comes. If the March 29 vote had been respected, we would be in a different situation regarding a constitutional making process. The current process is a parliament driven process. It is parliament that uh, endorsed the global political agreement. Parliament will have a select committee, select committee will go around the country, it will get some civic people. There are people in civil society that are going to engage and be involved even in the thematic committee of the Parliament and Select Committee. Some people are happy to do that. There is another group which is saying we will not agree to be in the Select Committee, but we will actively um, educate people to be involved in the Parliament and Select Committee process. And then the third group is saying that we will just